The intention for today's Mass is for Gail Califano. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, as we gather together today on the feast day of St. Cornelius Pope and St. Cyprian Bishop, both martyrs of the third century, let us call to mind our own vocation in life to be witnesses to Christ and ask pardon of the times when we have not faithfully carried out that vocation. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching empty too your faith. Then we are also false witnesses to God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have been fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from the foes, to refuge at your right hand. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, but I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Thank you. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the 12 and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward Chusa, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. The common theme running through the readings, the uh, liturgy, and the saints of today is that of the proclamation of the kingdom of God. We know from Christ's constant teaching in the scriptures that the kingdom of God is really speaking of the vocation we have to heaven itself, to eternal life, and of God's original blessing of his creation, the original integrity of creation with the creator that was disrupted by the original sin of Adam and Eve and continued in our personal sin. We see that our Lord is preaching the kingdom of God as he goes, accompanied by the 12 and by the women whom he had rescued from evil. And we see that that's a manifestation of the kingdom, that, that harmony between all peoples within the church particularly. We see that St. Paul in the first reading teaches what is the fundamental basis for that expression of the kingdom of God, which is the resurrection. He says, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. Christ's resurrection means that there is a resurrection for each and every one of us, which was part of God's original plan. That, that original creation, that original blessing, that original integrity of creation and creator unsullied by the reality of death which came into the world through sin. Now that is a magnificent truth. It's the fundamental truth. It is the motivating truth behind all Christian faith. It is the only thing that would lead us human beings, disciples of Christ, to give up everything in order to be faithful to the gospel and to live in a way that's radically different from those who do not have that belief. We see that manifest most clearly in the lives of the martyrs. We see it in the lives of Pope St. Cyprian and Pope, uh, rather Bishop uh, St. Uh, Cyprian, Cornelius and Cyprian, whose feast we observe today, both martyrs of the 200s when there were great persecutions of the church going on. They gave their very lives in witness to the resurrection of Christ in the knowledge that there is a resurrection of the body. We see that manifest in the way they lived, the way they served the church, the way they preserved the unity of the church during a time of great persecution, of great falling away, of great controversy concerning the, the nature of the church itself and, and what to do about those who had lapsed from the faith and then returned again. St. Cyprian expressed very beautifully in the midst of all that, the kind of integrity, the original integrity, the original unity that God intended in creation before original sin. St. Cyprian said, you cannot have God for your father if you do not have the church for your mother. God is one and Christ is one and his church is one. One is the faith and one is the people cemented together by harmony into the strong unity of a body. We see that harmony in the way Christ conducted his ministry in the early, among the apostles and those disciples who followed him. We see it manifest even amidst the struggles of the early church. We express that unity in our own celebration of the Eucharist and reception of Holy Communion, which makes us one bread and one body. And today, as is our custom on Fridays, in the adoration 
the Eucharistic adoration before the Blessed Sacrament, concluding the Mass today. Let us pray that we too will give witness to our own belief and faith in the unity of our unity with Christ, the unity with one another in the church, and our belief in the resurrection of the dead and the hope of the world to come. Let us pray. We pray for the church that it may be the sign and sacrament of unity that St. Cornelius and St. Cyprian and all the martyrs have died for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. We pray that we may work for a greater unity among ourselves in the church with other non-Catholic Christians and harmony with all our brothers and sisters throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, especially in the Ukraine, and for harmony in our own cities, in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the needy, and for all who have asked for our prayers in any way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. And for the intention of today's Mass, for Gail Califano, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. And on this day of Eucharistic adoration, we pray that the Eucharistic revival of the church in the United States may take root, grow, and bear great fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. Lord, hear the prayers we offer and grant us what we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution make us, too, steadfast in all trials through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith to their endurance, you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim.
pray today the first Eucharistic prayer, the Roman canon, which mentions today's saints, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian by name. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, the living. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of a Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, whose feast we observe today, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, Mysterium Fidei. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, his resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son 
may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and to all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, St. Teresa of Avila, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to remain with us for the 15 minutes of Eucharistic adoration, concluding with benediction immediately after this Mass.
containing in itself all delight. Let us pray. Lord our God, you have given us the true bread from heaven. In the strength of this food, may we live always by your life and rise in glory on the last day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. <laughs> 